the first part of chemical energetics is the energetics of a reaction, and for this, you need to be able to define endothermic and exothermic reactions, link these two concepts to bond breaking and bond forming, draw diagrams, and identify energy level diagrams for endothermic and exothermic reactions, and also you need to be able to calculate the overall enthalpy or energy change of a reaction given some data. Firstly, we need to define endothermic and exothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions are reactions that give out energy or heat, and it is involved in bond forming. And endothermic reactions are reactions that takes in energy or heat from the environment, and it is involved in bond breaking. Now let's take a look at this example of water. When water melts, the hydrogen bonds are being broken, so therefore bond breaking is happening, so it is an endothermic reaction. And this makes sense because you have to supply heat to ice in order to melt it. When water vaporizes, hydrogen bonds are broken too, so then this is a bond breaking process, and so it is endothermic. The opposite is applied for freezing and condensation because the bonds are being formed in both of these processes. Hydrogen bonds are being formed, therefore it is an exothermic reaction. And I included this example because often they might ask about this on the multiple choice paper, so yeah. So next, you need to know how to calculate the reaction's energy change using the data. So you would often be given something like this, a reaction and then some bonds and the energy to break or form those bonds. And then they would ask you to calculate the overall enthalpy change and then determine whether it is endothermic or exothermic. The first thing I would do is to always remember on the left side it will be bond breaking, on the right side it will be bond making. So then you might want to list out all of the bonds that are involved. And then once you've got that, another thing to remember is that when you do these calculations, you're taking it in terms of the energy that the molecules have. So therefore, in a bond-breaking process, in the calculation, your numbers would be positive as energy is being given to the molecules. So the molecules have a positive amount of energy. But in bond-making, the molecules are losing energy. So then they have a negative amount of energy. So in your calculation, that would be a negative number. So, you get this from that. This is just every number here. So the H, H bond is 4, 3, 6. This one, this. And for this one, as you can see, it's negative, but you have to multiply it by 2 because there are two of them. And then from here, you just got to add these things together. And you get a negative number for this case. And whenever there is a negative enthalpy change, Given that you are calculating the energy in terms of the amount of energy that a molecule has, then the reaction would be exothermic. Because this negative number means that more energy is being given out in the reaction than it is absorbed into the molecules. So therefore, the molecules at the end of the re reaction would have a negative amount of energy compared to the molecules at the start of the reaction. I want to try another example for this just to you know get into the gist of it. So again first of all you might want to identify the bond breaking as the left side and the bond making as the right side and then you identify all the bonds that are involved. Then you list out all the numbers that are involved. Again bond making would be negative, bond breaking is positive, and then you calculate the overall enthalpy change. And when it is a positive number, this means that the reaction is endothermic. And this is because this positive number means that more energy has been supplied to the molecules than the amount of energy that has been given off by the molecules. So then after that, you might be asked to draw a energy level diagram. You might be asked to identify it in paper one, I should think. So. This is the energy level diagram for exothermic reactions. As you can see, the reactants have more energy than the products. And this is because energy has been given out to the, to the surroundings, which makes sense. So, in this diagram, I would advise to always do this curve for activation energy, because you would get extra credit for it. And then, it just goes down in the curve like this. 
Remember to always label the reactants, the products, the overall energy change, which is just the difference in energy between the reactants and the products, and also the activation energy, which is the difference between the highest point in your diagram and the level of the reactants. And also always remember to label the axes, the x-axis being the progress of reaction or time, and the y-axis is the energy in kilojoules per mole. And the next, you guessed it, it's the diagram for endothermic reactions. So the reactants would have less energy than the product. So once again, you need to take a note to label the activation energy and the overall energy change, which again, remember to label the axes and you should be just fine. Now I want to summarize the theory part of this video, but not really the calculations or the graphs because you can only really learn it by practicing. So yeah. A reaction that gives out energy or heat would be an exothermic reaction. And these reactions are bond forming. And any reaction that takes in energy from the surroundings would be an endothermic reaction. And bond breaking is involved in these reactions. So yeah, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. And if it did, please leave a like and subscribe for more. And if you have any suggestions or anything, feel free to leave them in the comments.